A few months ago, I added a 92mm AIO and hoped to improve CPU temperature. Today video is about some minor changes to the case and hopefully I can improve GPU thermal. First change that can be noticed is the GPU cable. I bought these on Etsy and plan to use in another build. So for this one, I only use this GPU cable. These are much more flexible than the stock and can be plugged straight to the PSU. Previously, I used a Silverstone GPU extension cable and it was very stiff, which caused the back panel to be bulged out a little bit. The second change is the Corsair Commander Pro. I used to use velcro strap to mount it on the power supply. Now I place it in the back by using a single zip tie. It looks less clustered in the front and allow me to access the 2.5 inch hard drive much easier. Speaking about the drive, it's a 1TB 5400 RPM and came from my dead laptop so it should be 6 years old by now. On the right is another 1TB 5400 RPM that I pulled from my Dell Inspiron laptop. That drive will be used to replace the one on the left. The two drives are identical but the new one is much slimmer and this allows me to install it in the slot behind the case where I can just simply slide it in. Uh, still a little bit difficult because of the messy cables behind the case. If you have troubles bending SATA cables when installing, these slim cables can help solve the problem. The front of the case will be occupied with a 1TB 7200 RPM HESD hard drive that I've been using since I first built a PC. Next to getting high 5 feet for the case, the perfect height for the feet should be 17mm to 20mm. I chose the Sycon feet and got a black color. Now on Amazon they only have gold, but I think they will restock pretty soon. To remove the stock feet of the case, there are two screws on each. Simply unscrew them and these will come off. However, I could not use those holes to mount high 5 feet because they will interfere with the fan screws. But I came up with a new solution. I went to Home Depot and bought this bag of screws and nuts for just 2 or 3 bucks. With these, I can now install the high 5 feet by using the fan mounting holes. Of course, with this solution, it could be impossible to find a perfect length screws. There are two ways to solve this issue. Uh, the first one is shortening the screws. The second way is getting some M4 washers. I use 6 washers for 1 screw. Then install them like this. Now it fits perfectly and I don't have to worry about the screw hitting my graphic card. Repeat that until all 4 feet are properly installed. Next thing to do is opening my GTX 1070 and cleaning it up. I bought this more than a year ago for $180 and at that time it was a steal. Not only because it is a GTX 1070 but also it is a mini card which usually costs more due to the rarity. I did open the card the day I got it because it was very dirty. I cleaned it up very carefully but now I remember when I put the card back, I put so little thermal paste on the die which could not be enough to cover the GPU surface. So today I want to check that out and also install new thermal pad for the card. Yeah, clearly I did not have enough paste and you can see that there are areas on the card that don't have any paste. 
บิ๊กอูฟเทอร์โมแพดสำหรับคอร์ดับปรีดีโอ้ดแอนด์แฮฟเดอร์ดอนิตโอ้ส่วนเดอร์สวอนพอร์ดแอนด์เกตติ้งเทอร์ดส่วนดีส์วิลบีรีเพลซ์ดอาร์ติกเทอร์โมแพดวอร์ชชอสันวิดเดอะเทคนิสของ1 5 m ม m I think it should be enough. I also noticed that Gigabyte Thermopad only cover half of that one VRM. I used Noctua NTH1 thermal paste. This time, I will spread the paste on the entire die to make sure it is fully covered. With my GTX 1070 is new again, my Cuber QBX is fully assembled and ready for another test run. In the front, above the 80 mm fan, is the 1 terabyte hard drive and the RGB controller. The colorful cable is a SATA extension. Its stock cable was quite short. On top, we have dual Noctua Chromax 120 mm fans. And from this angle, you can see the one terabyte hard drive that I just added in the back. Even though I jammed many hardware into this 20 liter case, it still looks really neat. I feel like I am looking at a strong ATX case with all the fans, the AIO cooler. Now the last thing to do is turning it on and doing a final configuration to the graphic card. I used IQ software to make the fan start spinning around 47 degrees C. Then I followed Optimum Tech's guide to undervolt my graphic card and the result was way better. Before, in Doom, average temperatures was 82 degrees constantly. Now average temp dropped to 70 degrees and with the new feet, I can now feel the hot air escape from the bottom of the case and blow straight to my hand when I was playing. So that is it for today's video. The QBX is a very fun case to build and a good choice for starters who plan to downside their rig. Hopefully, I can come up with more contents for this case, but I will definitely have more video for other smaller ITX cases in the near future. So if you are interested in small form factor PCs, please consider subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.